Hello, my name is Tashina and I am a Georgia State University graduate. I did graduate number one in my graduating class. Before that, I served my country as a United States Airman, where I forecasted the weather as a career, as an initial career. Recently, I attended a 12-week immersive full-stack web development boot camp uh, by Savvy Coders. It allowed me to work in a facilitated Scrum development environment that ran in two-week sprints. The boot camp allowed me to create a great work, uh, a great working relationship in self-managed and a self-organized way. I found the agile ceremonies and principles to be very natural to myself and my natural inclinations. Uh, currently, I'm looking to join a socially considerate organization as a junior web developer. I believe that together I can assist that company in their purpose through my discipline and agile work ethic. I find software engineering to be one of the most interesting skills that I've been exposed to. I believe that my personality and aptitude is a cohesive fit for success in this career. I chose my capstone topic by considering what first world problems that I personally struggled with. At the time, it was maintaining my vegetable garden. So with that in mind, I did some research to see if others have similar issues with maintaining a schedule and uh, the, correct, the correct needs for each particular type of vegetable or fruit that they were growing and, you know, keeping on track with such needs. So in this case, um, you know, I had to balance the struggles of being an adult with a full-time job and taking a very intensive uh, boot camp, as well as maintaining a social life with my family outside of work and school. So I decided to create my single page application, which I named Plantiverse. It's formatted to create uh, easy to use trackers for the user's personal garden. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here. Right, so this is the beginning of my Capstone project. This is the page that is initially seen as the introductory page. I call this my introduction page. So there are five, six pages if you count the introductory page. <laughs> I do have my outline here that I created before I began with what I intended for my project to be about. So it had an introductory page, which has the logo and the name of the app on there. On my home screen, I wanted to have a nice greeting for the user with an image that displays the current weather at their current location that is determined by their IP address. I wanted the user to be able to change the location that they were receiving the weather and then the date and time for. Plantiverse was to have a page that is called uh, their garden. So originally this page was intended to have a visual diagram of the user's layout that they could decide or they could design themselves that would be relative to how their garden is set up at home and that way they could have the exact locations of what they planted and where also on this page there was going to be a chart that displayed the plant and when it was expected to mature I had a schedule page here <clears throat> that was supposed to have a visual calendar representation of the water and fertilization needs of the plants in their garden. And then it was going to have a list representation of those same needs that had 
the next date that it would need to be watered or fertilized. I have a plant care guide page here of which the user was going to be able to search for a particular type of plant that they were planting and pull the care guide from a reputable source. Uh, originally, I thought I would be using the farmers, the U.S. Farmers Almanac or the United States Department of Agriculture's care guides. And the user was supposed to be able to search by the name of the plant or by taking a photo of the plant and then save whatever records they wanted to their own care book. And then the last page was intended to be a discussion forum where the user can sort through discussions by keyword or create a new post if they didn't find what they were looking for, or just browse the forums and have garden-related discussions. So Plantiverse, Growing Better Together is the name of my app. I use one of the free logo maker websites that I found on Google to make this pretty heart design here, which is the logo for my app. If I click on home here, it takes us to the home page, which it has the title of the app, my logo, and then a welcome back greeting. I am located in St. Louis, so the browser did adequately uh, find my IP or yeah, use my IP address to get my latitude and longitude and the current weather for today. In my code, you can see see that in my index.js under my home screen here in my before router hook. So, so first I have this API call to extreme IP lookup, which pulls my IP address and then decides what city, state, country, latitude and longitude I'm located at. And it stores that information to my home view in my store folder under location. So if I pull up my home view here in my store folder, I have an open object or an empty object here for location for which that data is held. Once the latitude and longitude is retrieved, that information is used inside of a second API call to open weather map to get the exact location, convert the weather information from Kelvin to Fahrenheit, and then store that on my home store under weather, which can be seen here. Okay, and then the next page I have here is my care books page. So this top table here is for the search criteria. So as you can see, I have some saved plants down here uh, in my care books. This information is stored per user and it is pulled from Perennials, which is a website that I found that offers pre, uh, free plant care guides which I was able to use for the purpose of this capstone project. As you can see here, I get the information from the search parameter and then I pull or I push that information onto my care books page. I use promise.allsettled to make sure that if there are some search criteria requested, uh, it makes sure to pull the existing saved care book information to the bottom table before the website populates. So if I pull up my store care books page here, I do have a section for the search criteria, which is here, and a key for the saved care book. So if I go back to my web page and I type in a type of plant, I've been using Apple and I search that. 
Now it has pulled the first 30 responses from the perennials websites for type of apple. It's in the table, it stores the name of the plant, whether it's annual or perennial, the amount of water, watering that is required, the light tolerance of the picture of the plant. If there's a photo associated with that response, then it is populated here. And then I have some fun, a fun section here for um, also known as names for the plants instead of just the common name over here. So if the user wanted to select one of these as the type of apple that they planted in their garden, they would just click on this save button here, which would save it to their stored care books. As you see, now we have a fourth item here. Again, on this page, I have these tables to which I have created dynamically. So there is no extra, extra spaces if there aren't more, if there are more, um, there are no extra rows if there are only the, however many saved care books. So you can see that in my care book view. We can, my care book view here, you can see that I created this table and then I use a map function to iterate over the data that is pulled back from the API call. And each row will have one plant and the associated information with it. And then I save that information to the care books page, the user's care books by setting up a model here that'll have the data information that's pulled from the API call. And it is stored or the, sche the schema here is used in the route to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So in the route, you can see I have a post route, which is the feature that we use when we save a care book item. I have the get route, which gets all of the queries or the care books that are currently saved. I do have it set up to where if, if needed, the user could search um, in the back end, we could search for a particular care book by the ID assigned to it. And we can also delete a care book, which is on the saved care books forms here. I do have a delete button that will remove the care book if needed. So I hit the remove there and it does not refresh the page. It just removes it. So you see, we've gone down to four instead of five care books. Here is my discussion forum page. So the requirements for posting a discussion as seen in my discussion schema is a creator, the content, and the title of such content. So once those things are filled out, I do have this button here that is not quite functional. I'm still working on the bugs for that one, but this button is intended to post the content of the discussion post to this table. And then the user would be able to search based off keyword if they wanted to find a specific type of discussion to look through or contribute to. Here I have my schedule page. So the user would enter the name of the plant that they want to track, the date they planted it, and whether it was annual or perennial. And then they hit this plus button to populate that information in this table. In the future, I do plan on 
working on a way to move the information from the care book page that is saved in my in my API database and add it to the schedule page if requested. And lastly, I have my garden page here. Oops. Oh, as you can see, this is my whoopsie page not found. <laughs> but if I type the correct link here, which is my garden, it'll pull up the user's garden that'll have the plants that they have planted, the date that is expect it to mature, a countdown for how many days are left until that plant matures, and then a harvest button for them to say that they have harvested that plant. This was a very fun page for me to create because I had to create a function that would count down for however many days are left. So in doing that, I can pull up my index.js page. And as you can see here, I use an Axios call to pull uh, the garden information from my API that I created and named Discussion Post API. And then it would take that response and it would store it to the store page of my garden that is under a garden tracker. So if I pull up my store page here, you see I have the page is my garden and then I have a garden tracker. And then if I pull up the view for my garden and scroll down a bit here, I have an ID for the form that is called garden tracker. And here's, I use the similar setup as my care books where I used a map feature to iterate over the plant. And in this time I had to include the index so that it would for one list the index next to the plant, as you can see over here. And two, I needed to be able to uh, call the, the plant based off the index in order to be able to delete it. So with this button, or I have the countdown feature here. I'm getting ahead of myself, excuse me. <laughs> the countdown feature is the last column in my row. And I set it up so that it would, in this function, I had to assign a variable to today and the time. And then I assigned the variable of the maturity date, which is based off the information that is um, entered into the form here once I press plus. And then I had to um, create another feature called maturity date minus today, which literally took the maturity date variable and subtracted today's date from it. And that gives us days left. And I use math.floor to make sure that if, um, if the days left were more than zero, then the button that I've titled fully matured and harvested is disabled. Otherwise it is enabled. So that means that if it is zero or less than zero, then that plant is ready to be harvested. So the user is able to click on the button. The functionality right now does not work as far as deleting the actual item here. That is something that I plan to work through over the next few weeks. Uh, additionally, another thing that I plan on working through over the next few weeks is to get the rest of my buttons to work appropriately. So the discussion post, uh, click handler, the button on the, or the click handler on the button, excuse me, <laughs> needs to be altered to work appropriately. In the discussion page, you can see I had some undefined content here, and that is because it took a little tinkering to, um, figure out how to get the content to show up appropriately. Originally, I 
had it set up, I had begun working through the search feature in my discussion parameter and that broke my code, which is why you see this undefined here. <laughs> so I ended up removing that so that I can show my minimum viable bugs for this, for this video. Um, overall, I'm very happy with my work. Um, you can see that a lot of things that I planned did not necessarily work out. So for example, if I pull back up my outline, there is no visual representation of the water, such as an image like I originally planned here. Let's see. Additionally, um, I was not able to create this dynamic garden layout, but I believe that that is a feature that I would like to add in the future. I did not have a visual calendar representation on my schedule page, and I was not able to set up the feature to search for plants by photo. But those are all things that I plan on working towards in the future. And I'm very excited to continue to improving my project. All right, so I thank you all for listening to me today. And this is Plantiverse. Again, my name is Tashina and I look forward to exploring the world of software engineering.